Howdy, everybody. Here we are, all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. How often we wonder at the energy and the vitality of our children. On their feet for hours, running, hopping, skipping, jumping. That's one reason why children are always asking for something to eat. Often spoiling appetites for regular meals. It's a problem that many parents just can't solve. If you have this trouble, here's the answer. When your children ask for something to eat between meals, give them Horlick's malted milk tablets. They satisfy hunger, but digest quickly so that appetites are not spoiled. And yet the full nourishment of milk, wheat, and malted barley supplies energy to keep them going. Children love them, too. Say they taste better than candy. Give Horlick's malted milk tablets to your children. You can get a handy flask containing 25 tablets for only 10 cents. Or you can get them in larger size bottles also. Remember, they are made by Horlicks, the makers of the original malted milk. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, you know Lum and Abner have dissolved partnership in the Jotham Down store and have divided up the stock of merchandise equally between them. They are now competitors, operating two separate stores under the same roof. <laughs> this may not straighten out their differences, however, as competition is keen, and they have resorted to all the tricks of the trade to get the business. As we look in on the Jotham Down store, or stores, today, we find Lum and Abner on their respective sides of the building. Grandpappy Spears is just entering the front door. Listen. Well, 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 what's going on in here? Well, howdy, Grandpap. Come in. Right over this way. Come on over here on this side, Grandpap. This is a place to do your thing. Right over here, Grandpap. Lowest prices and pine rates. Quality merchandise at quality prices. Yeah, over pretty good on this side, Grandpap. Swap your merchandise for anything you've got. Cows, chickens, hogs, eggs, butter, horses, yeah, anything. Indeed I am. <laughs> Now, what took place around here anyway? What's the idea of having this rope running down the middle of the store here this way? Why, we divided up the store. This is my side over here, and that side there belongs to Mr. Ed. But it's a mighty poor place to do your trading now. Don't, don't listen to none of that mouth talk of his and Grandpap. Come on over here where you get honest measurements. Pay cash and buy it for less. Yeah, trade with Peabody where you don't need no cash. No cash. Strictly credit. <laughs> well, you fellas are hollering in here. Everybody would think you had a sideshow in here instead of a grocery store. Yeah, and I'll guarantee to beat any prices that you can get on that side over there, regardless of what they are. Uh, what was she wanting, Grandpap? Uh-huh. Weren't wanting to buy nothing. I just thought I'd come down low for a while. Well, for goodness sakes, why didn't you say so? And us hollering around here. From now on, when you come in the front door there, why well, say where you want to buy or just visit him. Yeah, come on over here, Grandpap. You don't have to buy nothing to be welcome over here. All is glad to see my friend. Oh, well, now, that's all right now, Grandpap. I never meant that you ain't welcome. Now, just sit down. That's right down right there. Yeah. Can't, can't both of you fellas get on the same side of the store? Same side. I ain't dog get that fat, long, lanky varmint over there. Even as much as sticks his head on this side of that rope there in the middle, I'll fling a can of beans at him. All right, Grannies, I wish I could make you mad enough to throw a batch of canned goods over here. I'd put on a sale. Yeah, you won't be able to put on nothing again. I'll get done chunking at you. Yeah, sit down, Grandpa. Sit down. Best way to do a fella like him is just ignore him. Well, uh, what's the matter, Abner? What's happened? Have you and Mum had a falling out with one another? Well, we just... Tons of partnership. He never liked the way that I was running the store, and I know I don't like the way he runs it. So we just divided it up. Uh, you mean this is two separate stores now in here, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Two separate stores. This is my side over here, and everything on this side of that rope there in the middle belongs to me. Well, I do know. <laughs> now, this is the second time you fellas have broke up this way. Well, this time it's for good, though. He's running a strictly cash over there, and I'm selling stuff on the credits. Or swap. I'm swapping groceries for anything that you want to bring in here. Swapping? Yes, sir. You don't need no cash money over here, Grandpa. If you need anything, why, just stick a goose or a rooster or a pig or a horse under your arm. Come on down. I'll swap for anything. That sounds like a good idea, Abner. I sure good idea. Yeah. yeah. Lots of folks here in the community that ain't got the cash to pay for stuff. Yeah, you ought to do a nice business. Oh, my, yes, my, yes. I see right now, Grandpa, but you know a good business idea when you hear one. Now, that's uh, right there is what me and Lum had her falling out about. 
He wouldn't stand for me to do it when I brought the idea. Uh-huh. Well, I'm sort of shot in his ways. No, and he makes me so mad sometimes I can't hardly stand myself. Yeah, what you aiming on doing with all this stuff you're swapping for, though? Oh, well, I've got a pen built out back of the store there where I'm going to keep it. I've already got uh, uh, three pigs and uh, eight guineas out there besides, oh, uh, 30 some odd chickens. Now, that's, that's what I want worse than anything else is chicken. Now, chicken. there's money in them, Grandpa. They, they fought you now. I was just thinking, Abner, I've got a, a bunch of rabbits over there at the place that I might swap you if you can use them. Rabbits? Yeah. Why, sure I can use them. Yeah, bring them down. I'll swap for them. Yes, sir, I, I've got a big dry goods box out there in back. It'll be the very place for them. Well, they're fine rabbits. Pure-blooded Belgium hares. Well, I don't care where they're from, just so they're rabbits. It's, it's what's left from that pair I got my little grandson when he visited here last summer, you know. Yeah, yeah, I recollect when him and your daughter were here. Yeah, of course, we've sold off some of them, but I think there's still close to 20 left. Uh-huh. Well, uh, come on out back, Grandpap. I want to show you what kind of place I've got rigged up back there. We can just go through the season. Well, come in, come in. Oh, well, right over this way. Cheapest price you can find, Rick. Uh, 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 howdy, Dick. Yeah, come in, Dick. Yeah, I'll be back directly, Dick. Well, what's happened in there anyway? Don't look like the same place. Yeah, we've changed it all up, Dick. See, this is two stores now. Yeah, uh, Cedric was telling me something about it this morning, Long. <laughs> Dick. Abner, or Mr. Peabody, had his ideas on how things ought to be run, and I had mine, so we just made two stores out of it. <laughs> this is mine over here, and I can run into suit myself. <laughs> oh, swan to goodness, if you fellas ain't a sidelong. You're worse than a couple of children. Well, it uh, just looked like the only thing to do, Dick. Abner wanted to start that swap idea, and I just wouldn't stand for it. <laughs> Why, we'd have been bankrupted in no time. Swapping good merchandise for a bunch of old cows and chickens and one thing or another. Well, this is the limit. What's the rope for, then? No, oh, that, that uh, divides up the store. <laughs> See, everything on this side of the rope's mine. <laughs> well, you, you've got the advantage of having you, Lum. The telephone's on your side of the post there in the middle, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, I thought of that first, but uh, this morning, Abner got Ezra Seastrunk to come over and put him one on the other side of the post there. <laughs> See, <that>? telephones, huh? <laughs> yeah. Time anybody rings or jot them down, store both phones ring. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid that's going to cause some trouble. Oh, uh, fun to goodness. One I love. Now, this is not going to work. You fellas can't run two stores here in the same room. Well, we can't divide up the building. Now, I know I ain't going to move out, and he's too stubborn to. <laughs> well, now, love, you fellas tried this once before, and it never worked out. Why don't you talk to Abner? See if you can't get him to listen to reason. Now, I ain't speaking to Mr. Peabody. If there's any talking did, he can just come over and apologize and do the talking himself. Oh, well, Lon, um, it, it's just a shame. You fellas have been the best of friends for years. I hate to see you let some little old thing like this come between you. Yeah. <laughs> Me and him has been partners for a long time. Ain't Why, sure. But we'll never be again, I'll tell you that right now. Why, you'd be lost without one another. Well, of course, we're right here in the same building, so we see one another all day. I grant if there's another vacant building in town, I'd sure move into it, though. Yeah, but now, Lum, remember, Abner's always sort of looked up to you. Sort of depended on you, Lum. Yeah, <laughs> he has, ain't he? Why, sure he has. Yeah, we went through a lot together, all right, me and him has. I could always depend on Abner. He's always right there in time of need, sickness, and... Distress. Why, sure, he's one of the finest fellows that ever lived. Set up with one another when we took down sick and lent one another money when we needn't. Why, sure. More like blood kin than partners. That is, we was, but if he thinks he can run over me just because he's president, he's got another thinker coming. I'll show him where to get off at. I'll run him out of business, that's what I'll do. He's already started cutting prices. He has. Why, yeah, selling stuff way below cost. I granny, I'm going to give him enough of that, so I can cut just as low as he can. Yeah, well, now, here in Alamo, you fellas start a price war over here, now it's going to hurt my business. I can't make any money with you fellas over here giving stuff away. That's right, Andy. Why, sure, yeah, don't do that. But I can't just sit back and get all and let him get all the business. He's did four times as much as me today. That swapping business of his. That but wait, wait, wait a minute. Here he comes now, him and Grandpa. Yeah, look at him. Acts like he owns a whole store. Well, way. Dick, I can see you ain't very particular who you associate with. What'd you say? <laughs> you heard what I said. I told Dick you weren't particular who you associated with. Well, what about yourself? Uh, uh, excuse me, Grandpap. I never aimed to say that. Come on over here, Dick, and I'll show you how a real store's run. Come on over here. Yeah, well, I want to talk to you, Abner. I'll be over there in a minute. Wait a minute. I'll answer the phone myself, Abner. 
Try next no, you bottle. don't. No, you don't. I'll answer it myself. Hello? Got him down, sir. Well, I'm Edward Stalking. Oh. Uh, what was it you want, Miss Lunchford? Well, I've got the best flour in town. Forty-eight pound sack for a dollar and fifteen cents. I'll sell you the same thing for a dollar. I'll make it ninety cents, I guess. Eighty cents, seventy cents. Wait a minute, you're cutting your own price. Uh, Sixty cents, Miss Lunchford. Fifty cents. Forty cents. Thirty cents. <laughs> Well, the citizens of Pine Ridge are certainly benefiting by Lum and Abner's quarrel. Ladies and gentlemen, in the following scene, we see that Ted Martin is calling on his unfortunate friend, Bill Gale, who's been down with a touch of the flu. Let's listen. Well, but it's no Jim himself. Hello, Bill. How's the patient? Not so hot, Ted. Still plenty wobbly. Say, how's Gene and the kids and old Tom and the office and... The... Hey, hey, one at a time, old man. <laughs> what do you think I am? Oh, you know how it is. Don't see much of the gang sitting here all day. Well, that's just what I came up to see you about. Bill, uh, things aren't going so well at the office. The boss... Oh, you don't have to explain, I know. I think it's time I was getting back on the job. Well, it's been nearly two weeks, old man. You know, George Green was down with the flu since you left, and he's been back at his desk for three days. Now, I've got a suggestion. Oh, gee, what's the use? I've tried them all, Bill, and I don't get the slightest bit stronger. Well, don't tell me you've tried Horlick's malted milk. Horlick's? Why, that's what Elder gives to the youngsters. But you wouldn't want well, me. Well, that's just what I would want. You know, there's nothing like Horlick's to pick you up after the flu. You mean make me stronger? That's it. Horlick's, you know, is one of the most nourishing foods you can take. Builds up your strength and puts you back on your feet. That's why they give it to folks after illness. Say, that's queer. I know it would swell for the kids, but me? Well, I'll be darned. Hey, Eleanor, <laughs> fix me up a glass of Horlick's, quick. And put one alongside for Ted. Out of boy, Bill. Oh, boy. Maybe I'll get back to work this week, huh? Well, Ted certainly earned his glass of Horlicks, chipping off Bill that way. You know, there's really nothing like Horlicks for building up strength after illness. That's because it is so rich in nourishment, so easy to digest. If you're feeling run down, try the Horlicks malted milk method yourself. You can get it at your drugstore in either natural or chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horley, who now bid you all good night and good health.